Greetings to everybody. I appreciate you being here with us tonight. We're uh, live tonight in the sanctuary of Crossroad Baptist Church for our midweek Bible study. We assembled just a little while ago with a group of people here, and, and uh, Mitch led us in a couple of good songs that we enjoyed. And I spent just a few minutes uh, giving a little update about our transition work here at the church. And uh, I plan to do this every Wednesday night as we gather at 7 o'clock. The first 15 minutes, we'll just have a, a, an opening with some singing and prayer, and then and I'll uh, just have a conversation with the people that are here. And then around 7.15 uh, in the weeks to come, we're, uh, we're going to have our Bible study with those that are unable to be with us and uh, like to get a good grasp here in the middle of the week of uh, something that will nurture you and nourish you uh, in the days ahead. Uh, one of the things that I want to introduce to you tonight uh, these next several weeks, I want to bring a series, if I can, uh, about prayer. Uh, I'm going to introduce this to the church uh, uh, these next couple, three weeks, because the church is moving forward during this interim period into a very important part of our church with our mission focus. And it's so easy sometimes just to leave the Lord out of things, thinking we have all the answers, we know the direction that we've got the energy, the power, the resources. We've done it before, we can do it again. And uh, I, I want us to kind of focus on the Lord. I want to lead the church in, in that behalf and uh, talk a little bit about prayer. And I want to give you some, some good nuggets throughout the Scriptures these next few weeks that will, uh, that will help you, I think, in your personal praying and uh, also in your, uh, the, our church praying and when we're more focused on particular things. Uh, be honest with you, if I can help you get answers to your prayer, uh, I'd like to kind of be that resource for you in a way. I can just kind of lead you to the waters and lead you to the Word. And so we're going to open the Word of God the next few Wednesday nights and, uh, and just see how we can uh, just have uh, be people of God wanting the mind of the Lord in our decision-making, in our direction, and have the power of God. And I don't have to say this. I think you already know we're living in difficult times. Man, we need to be people of prayer. Uh, we're in a political time here in our country, and uh, these last uh, next 30 days or so, and, and uh, uh, the people of God need to be praying. We all do. Uh, there's a crisis that has hit our country by way of a health crisis, and it's, a, it's, it's been a great disruption and uh, caused numbers of deaths, a lot of tragedy and confusion. And uh, we just need the mind of the Lord to be able to respond properly to whatever God has us going through. And uh, our church here has uh, uh, lost a dear pastor for many, many years and uh, is kind of in between and a holding pattern, seeing what the Lord has. And so Crossroad uh, uh, certainly needs that uh, direction and help during these days. So. Uh, these next few weeks on Wednesday night, we're going to be giving a few lessons on prayer. But in John chapter 14 tonight, I want to start off, uh, not so much in particular about prayer, but I want, to, I want you to find out who your best prayer partner is, and that's the Holy Spirit. And I want to give a lesson tonight about the Holy Spirit. And here in John 14, there are so many things in the last half of this chapter that gives us that reference. And uh, when you think about his role... Uh, I, I discovered six or seven different uh, uh, responsibilities that have been promised to us by the Holy Spirit. That when Jesus left, He said, this is what the Holy Spirit is going to do for you and through you and in you. And uh, I, I want to uh, uh, kind of just review this as an introductory lesson tonight. And, uh, and then we'll continue next week more pertinent to the uh, specific areas of praying. Uh, the Holy Spirit has many responsibilities and many roles and many promises that He does and uh, in, in, in relationships to, to so many people um, and to us personally, just like you tonight. Uh, you wear many hats too. Some of you are, are fathers, uh, your husbands, your grandparents, uh, your brothers, you know, and, or your sister, your mother, and uh, you're one person. Uh, but you have uh, uh, many uh, responsibilities or likenesses about the relationships you have with other people, and they do vary. And I want you to see the varying roles of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said was going to happen when He left us. And He named these things in John chapter 14, beginning in verse 15 and 16, down through this chapter. 
And notice what he said in John 14. First of all, he said in the beginning part of the chapter, he said, I'm going away, and don't let your hearts be troubled. You know those words. Don't let it be afraid. Uh, believe in God. Believe also in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you in heaven. He said, I'm going. And if I go, I'm coming again. And then Philip uh, responded to him in uh, uh, or Thomas in verse number four and said, Lord, we don't understand this. You know, uh, we don't know why you're leaving. We don't know where you're going. We don't know the way you're talking about. And Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Verse number six. And he introduces himself in a Jesus that's going away to do a work for us. And he's talking about a return back to us. And then he gives us in verse number 15, a responsibility is a conditional promise. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, that's a big responsibility right there, to love the Lord. If you love me, you're going to carry on to my commandments. He'd given them many in the three and a half years he was discipling these disciples. But it's almost like here's a question again, Lord, how can that be possible? And that's where he talks about the Holy Spirit. He said, first of all, in verse number 16, uh, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit so that He can comfort you. And uh, He can be a counselor. Uh, another version says He comes as our helper. I've got the ESV and it says, I'll ask the Father and He will give you another helper. There's the Holy Spirit. To be with you forever. I'm leaving. If you love me, keep my commandments. He said, that's what I've I, I required of you. And the answer is, it's easy when I'm standing next to you, but now that I'm away, I'm going to give you the paraclete. The one who stands beside you. The one of the same kind, actually. You've known me as Jesus in the flesh. But now you're going to be introduced to Jesus in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's that word that's used, that another. And so the first picture we see of the Holy Spirit that Jesus introduces us as He leaves is He comes to you as a comforter or as a helper, as a, as a counselor. And what He does, uh, there's some things that these disciples are asked to do, uh, to walk in peace and to walk in love. And so this counselor, this helper, this paraclete in the Spirit comes to stand right next beside them. That's what, that's what the lesson here is. He's going to stand right next to you. And He's going to be with you forever. Matter of fact, if you go a little further in the Scriptures, you'll see that He's introduced as being one who, uh, not only in that light, is, He actually says He's going to be in you. You remember that? He said the Spirit is going to be in you. And as we study the Scriptures, we know that as believers in the New Testament, that when a person comes in Christ and into the family of God by way of relation, that God's Spirit does come upon us and it does come inside of us. And so the first role of the Holy Spirit in John 14, when Jesus said He's leaving, is found in verse number 16. He's going to counsel you and help you. He's going to be standing right next to you and He's going to be with you at all times, forever. Uh, like a mediator, like an encourager, like an advocate. He's my helper. He's my representative, the Holy Spirit. Go down to the next verse and you see a second role of the Holy Spirit. And all of these begin with C, the letter C. You can put counselor or comforter in verse number 16. But now He's your connection in verse number 17. Let's read it together. Even the Spirit of truth. Now, he talked about another helper. There's the Holy Spirit. Now he calls him the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. So let's just tell ourselves from what the Bible says right here. If a person is outside of Christ, they will not have the possession of the Holy Spirit. Can't receive him because it neither sees him or knows him. Okay? Now, wait a minute. They were introduced to Jesus several years back, and they've come to know Jesus, though He's leaving. He said, I'm going to be with you always, but in a different context as a spirit. 
I'm going to go represent you to God the Father. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm coming back to receive you. But while I'm gone, the Spirit of truth will come upon you because you've known me. You know him for he dwells with you. And here it is. He dwells with you and will be in you. That's even better, isn't it? That's kind of like icing on the cake right there. Man, that's the cream with the pudding. He's, he's not only around me, next to me, uh, like the paraclete, another next to me, but he's inside of me. You know, uh, it's amazing to think about that. Uh, I don't want to minimize the Lord Jesus. I would never do this. And please, uh, uh, even right now as I say this, I ask for the Spirit of God to help me say this correctly. And uh, because Jesus, uh, you are most lovely and wonderful. But when Jesus was with them, he wasn't in them. He was with them. He said, I'm going away. I dwelt with you. and I'm still going to dwell with you in the Spirit. But this time, I'm going to be in you. In you. And so now we have a connection. By the way, if we didn't have verse number 17, I can, I can run around this church 10 times and I'd say, bless the Lord, I got a comforter, I got a counselor, I got a helper standing next to me. That's good stuff, buddy. But now he's in me. He's in me. Whoa. That turns the light on. He's in me. What does that mean? That connection with the Holy Spirit. Wow. I like to tell people, but I've done this before. And, and by the way, I've been able to do it without any arrogance. And I've been able to say it in a humble way to people. Don't mess with me. Got something mighty powerful at hand right here. Live inside of me. You don't know about it because he's not in you. You're in the world. You, he, you, you, not, you don't have no idea what I'm talking about. But wait a minute. In essence, what I say, there's some power in me that I have because greater is he that's in me, you see, than he that's in the world. So why don't we just, for about 30 seconds, just tell the Holy Spirit inside our hearts, says, oh, Holy Spirit, this is good stuff tonight. I'm glad I came out on Wednesday night up this hill. Hear this story. Man, you live inside of me. What does that mean? The comforter around me, but now the connector in me. So that's the role of the Holy Spirit. By the way, you remember Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going away, but let me give you some good news. That's what the, that's what the last chapter, part of the chapter. Let me give you some good news, though. I'm going to be away, but now let me explain something to you, fellas. You won't see my body anymore. I'm going to be here. I'm just going to be in a different form. I'm going to be in the Spirit, and I'm going to be in you. And, and, and there's going to be a work done in you while I'm gone. And to comfort, to counsel, to help, verse 16, and now there's a connection inside. Let me give you a third C, verse number 18. Here we go. I like to, by the way, I told you the other day, I, my style of preaching is that one, two, three, four, man. Yeah, go, just give me a little text. And uh, I learned that in college and seminary, my, my teachers uh, that would help me do you know, expository preaching. And that is just take a text for what it says. You can take one verse and just digest it. Just, 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 just don't, don't opinionate it. Just, just take it and, 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 and unfold what God is saying. And I just I do that. So here's that one, two, three, four. You know, one, he, he's the comforter. Two, he's your connection. Three, he's the caregiver, verse number 18. Let's read it together. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Now remember Jesus said that he was going to leave them. He promised he would care for them as a Christian. But how was he going to do that when he wasn't there? And he's explaining to them already. He gave them the introduction to it in verse 16 and 17. If he's with you in the dwelling and he's inside of you in your connection, then he's going to be doing something. While you're not just going to be connected to him, but you're going to watch him be your caregiver. You're not going to live your life like orphans without 
the fellowship and the relationship of a father who cares for you, a caregiver. Caregiver. He said, I'm going away, but the Holy Spirit is going to care for you. And they needed this care. First of all, they were troubled, verse number one. Look at that. They were fearful. They, they were emotional like we are. And so this caregiver comes alongside of them on the outside and then comes inside of them to offer them the care that's needed uh, during this day. Uh, and so the Holy Spirit, like a heavenly guardian, comes to, to minister to us. And there's other scriptures we don't have time for tonight, but outside of John 14, that shows us about the Holy Spirit, what He does for us in His caregiving uh, to us. And uh, 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 just when I think of verse number 16, on the comforting side of the Holy Spirit. And so He comes to comfort us or to, or to, uh, to counsel us and help us. He comes to connect with us. He comes to be our caregiver. He's not going to treat us like we're orphaned. I'm going away and leaving you like you don't have anybody to look after you. No, I've got, the Holy Spirit's going to take good care of you. Going to take good care of you. And let me put a parenthesis right here. If you believe that tonight, if you believe the Holy Spirit takes good care of you, you ought to tell Him, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. You're doing a good job. I, it's amazing how much you care for me. Caregiver. Verse 19 to 21, put down the word companion. Now this word gets a little bit more intimate. I like this verse, these three verses. Verse 19, yet a little while and the world will see me no more. I'm getting ready to leave you, remember. But you will see me. Now what do you mean by that? Because I live, you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. I love that. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. The companionship because of love. I don't have time to get into this, but just in verse number 21 alone, you've got the idea of love four times mentioned. To think about that. There's the partners that are mentioned of God loving the Son and, uh, uh, and, 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 and in that relationship. And uh, uh, it's, it's a connection that is there where there's that companionship. You remember that picture in Ephesians where, where Jesus said, Husbands, love your wives. That's that companionship by way of a physical relationship or a, a physical picture. But he said, remember the picture was the Christ loving the church, loving you. There's a companionship with the Holy Spirit that, that lives inside of us. And, it's, and it's, 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 it's that demonstration of continued love. If you love me, uh, you're going to be loved by the Father. You know, I feel that way about my, my family. Uh, uh, my kids feel this way about older men. Here's what they feel. If there's men in the church... There are men in the neighborhood, or men down the street, or men in Carnersville that, that like my dad, sign me up. I like that person too. And if my dad likes them, then I like them too. The affinity of someone in relationship where there's love between the, the two in, 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 in their identity, God and Jesus, verse number 20, 21. And he said, if you love God, you're going to love Jesus. And then he's talking of the Holy Spirit in this whole context. It's a continued companionship we have in this love relationship. So we're tied together. I'll put it this way. You can't love Jesus and not love the Holy Spirit. You can't love the Holy Spirit without loving Jesus. You can't love Jesus without loving God. You can't love God without loving the Holy Spirit. And there's a, there's that com the, the relationship in one is our companionship that we have demonstrated because of love. So the Holy Spirit is a companion in my journey. I've got more to say about that, but, but let's go down to the fifth C tonight. And I don't know of a better word to put down here except the word coach. And I get that from verse number 26. But before we get to verse 26, let's read verse number 22. The Holy Spirit is like a coach. Judas, not a scared, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Now he's asking a question that he does not have an answer to, 
that he wants to learn about. So he needs someone who has the answer, who's been there, done that, to mentor him and to instruct him. Now hold on to that thought. So he asked a question. Judas, not, not Iscariot, but the other Judas. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. There's that companionship. And we, see that companionship? We will come to him and make our home with him. You mean the Father and Jesus will make their home with me if I keep his commandments? Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Verse 25. These things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the Helper, remember verse number 26, the Comforter, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, and here's the coach, He will teach you all things. And as a coach, He's going to bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. It's almost like it's not enough that Jesus just said it and goodbye. He's leaving us a helper, a coach to help us, to keep His commands, to keep His promise, to not be afraid. If that wasn't enough, verse 27, we'll see in just a moment. He, he said, peace. That's what He wants. Us. Not fear, but peace. So He gives us a coach to help us remember the things that the Lord has taught us. I don't know how many times, probably, I'm not going to say every day, but several times a week, I know that I'm telling the Holy Spirit this. Holy Spirit, help me to remember. I don't want to forget. Especially when you get to be my age, I'll be 65 next month. Lord, help me not to forget. I, I, I see that's coming on me. Maybe it's my older years. I don't know what it is. He said he's going he's gonna to teach you how to observe and remember the things that I've required and asked of you. He's going to be so close around you and in you to teach you, verse number 26. So as a helper, He's now teaching us. He leads us in the roles that we're to play in our lives. I don't know how often you pray to the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit who helps me in my discernment of my life. I'm constantly asking, please, if you're inside of me, you're dwelling, and if you love me like Jesus and the Father did, <clears throat> I need your help. I need you to show me. Uh, you're an infinite Holy Spirit living in me, residing in me to help me. And so He leads us in a coaching role. And I don't know if you had different kinds. There's good coaches, there's bad coaches. There's mean coaches, and there's, there's helpful. But the, the coach that takes us along, sometimes he gets <coughs> a little stern with us and strong with us, but it's for our own good and our benefit. He corrects us. And so the Holy Spirit, our coach. And then let me just stop on this because of our time tonight. Let me give you one more. Verse 27, 8, 9. The Holy Spirit allows us to be victorious. I put it down this way. To keep my alliteration with a C, I put down the word champion. He's my hero. He's my champion. Look, verse 27. <clears throat> so important. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away, verse number 1 and 2. And come to you, if you have loved me, and would have rejoiced, because I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now, I've told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may have confidence. You may believe it. You may believe it. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, gives us the prospect of having peace in all of our journey. Matter of fact, He said, I'm giving you peace. The world can't do it. Can they get an amen there? I can give you peace. I know you're troubled. 
I'm going to the Father for a reason. But I'm leaving somebody with you and in you to counsel, to help, to care for you, to be your companion, to coach you. And now He's going to be your victor to conquer. Uh, don't let your hearts be afraid. Here's what that says to me. Uh, don't live in fear. Uh, walk in peace. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Paul said that, didn't he? You know what he said to us? Can, can you believe the Bible says this? Philippians chapter 4. Don't be anxious about anything. King James says, be careful for nothing. How are we going to do that, Lord? I'm, I'm leaving it with you. I'm leaving you peace. The Spirit's going to help you with it. I don't want you to be troubled and anxious. Some of you think, well, I just couldn't sleep last night. No, you're troubled. You're worried. Anxiety. It's gotten out of control. At least that's what you say. You can't control it. It bothers me. It just it, it stirs my waters. It, it messes, I can't focus. Make all these excuses. And I want to say, but well, then where'd the Holy Spirit go? What's he there for? He's to coach you and to companion you and to care for you and to comfort and counsel you so that your life could be a peaceful life. Sometimes I hear people say, well, my life's been, it's just been, you know, and it, it, I'm not saying you don't have trouble. In the world, you're going to have trouble, tribulation. We know all that. But if it takes your peace, then, then something, something, something's unbiblical going on here. Something ain't right. <laughs> and your joy, he says to rejoice in verse 28 and 29. Rejoice. So there's peace and joy. Matter of fact, there's a passage that talks about the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 4, I think it is. The kingdom of God has come to you in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Man, you preach as long as I have the Baptist crowd. It makes you wonder sometimes. What are you preaching to here? Where's the joy? <laughs> Where's the peace? You know, and parking lot conversations don't get too peaceful out there no more. I mean, it's just strife and bickering and didn't get my way. You know, where? Come on. What? Ain't the Holy Spirit bigger than that? That's up to you, brother, dear sister. Peace and joy. He promised it. And so the Holy Spirit has got that responsibility. To, he's going to be our channel. You can't do it, but He can. And, and, and let Him work in you. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Oh, by the way, I've got one more C since i got another minute. The last C I put down is He's my commander. Commander. Verse 30 and 31 kind of gives that to us in closing. Oh, man. Chapter 14. I'll no longer talk much with you, for the rule of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. The commanding of the Holy Spirit. Uh, First of all, I see the Lord Jesus making a command to his disciples at the end. Let's get up. Let's go from here. All I told you about the Holy Spirit. Let's put it in action. But to, to think about the controlling of the Lord in our lives and the Holy Spirit is that commander for us. And he directs us and he leads us in the way of the Lord Jesus. By the way, don't you ever forget Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Even our Lord Jesus, the scripture says, he was led by the, you said it, the Spirit. And who are we to think anything less than to let that great command of the Spirit of God come and rule in our lives and dictate to us and, and, and speak, let's get up and rise and go from here. <laughs> Jesus said to his disciples, sometimes the Holy Spirit, let's, let's go, let's go, let's get up, let's hear that command. And sometimes he's not just as a coach or a counselor, or a comforter or a caregiver. Sometimes he's like that commander, the controlling one in our 
lives. So tonight, Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. I got some good news for you. I got someone not only going to be with you, but he's going to be in you. And I'm giving him seven responsibilities to do. And remember what he said? Forever. Continue. And so tonight we can rejoice that we have a sweet Holy Spirit. All God's people said, Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this brief scripture tonight in John chapter 14 that reminds us of the the tremendous responsibilities that have been sweetly, graciously given to us by your Spirit. And I pray that we will take a veil of the sweet Spirit of God who now lives in us, that serves us and helps us and blesses us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.